when faced with a serpent, thought George Hong, as they moved quietly down the hallway at the Hilton. It is wise to first cut off its head. The other two stood back while he knocked on the door to the room. Who is it? asked the man inside, speaking in English. George took a chance, speaking in Cantonese and keeping his voice as muffled as possible. He said only, it's me. Tommy? The man inside also switched to Cantonese. You back already? Yeah, said George. Hold on a minute. George said nothing. He looked up and down the hallway. Except for himself and the two men from Toronto, the hallway was empty. He took out his pistol. The others did the same. The door started to open and George hit it hard with his shoulder, knocking the man behind it off balance. He stuck his gun in the man's gut and pushed him backwards as the other two followed him into the room. Shut the door, George snapped, never taking his eyes off the man in front of him. When he heard the door click shut, he pushed the man back again. Sit, he said, as the man fell backward onto the couch. We have things to talk about. You have not come to talk. Perhaps not, but it is in your best interest to humor me. George pressed his gun into the man's solar plexus. You might live longer. Is that so? It is. Now what's your name? Jimmy Lee. You're Tommy Poon's employer. I do not know a Tommy Poon. George smashed the side of his pistol into Jimmy Lee's head, breaking the skin just behind the right temple. You are Ghost Shadow, said George. Tommy Poon works for you. Jimmy Lee glared at George. He neither confirmed nor denied the statement, so George continued, Tommy Poon has something that belongs to us. We will get it back. As for you, we will send our message to Ghost Shadow. Ghost Shadow is not welcome in Canada. Jimmy Lee smiled bitterly. I do not know what this Ghost Shadow is, he said. Have it your way. I'm sure Ghost Shadow will understand our message. George turned to the other two. Our conversation has ended. Please help the gentleman to his feet. While each man took one of Jimmy Lee's arms and they lifted him from the couch, George cracked the door and looked at the hallway. Still empty, he shut the door. It's a shame we have so little time. I've always valued the traditional methods of execution. However, this will have to do. He walked to Jimmy Lee, put his gun to the man's temple and pulled the trigger. The other two let go and Jimmy Lee's body slumped to the floor of his room. Come, said Jimmy Lee, said George Hong, we have things to do. On the way out, George hung the Do Not Disturb sign over the door handle. Sleep well, he said in English.